I would encourage you to pray for mercy for America. But boy, so ever so often I see a church that's just living for the Lord. Amen? Ever so often I see a child of God that's just doing their best for the Lord. They've got a burden for lost sins. They've got or for lost sinners. They've got they've got a burden and they're they're prayer warriors and they're doing everything they can to live for God and they've got standards in their life. And I just get excited, praise God, because the salt is still here. God, hear the prayers of your people. Gideon was in a wicked society. But he was living for the Lord, but the devil had beat him down. I know preachers tonight that's been beat down. They've tried, but they can't get people to come to church. They've tried, and they've seen people come and, and come to the altar and, and leave and, and not come back. and That's discouraging. I, I know people, Christian people, that love the Lord, and they're, they, they're, just, they're fighting battles with the devil, and the devil's just got them beat down. Old Gideon said, boy, he said, I've been through a hard time. He said, the Lord has just, uh, he said, the Lord hath forsaken us. Well, God had a message for Gideon. In verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Can't you just see that? The angel comes along under an oak tree and sits over and watches. Here's old Gideon. Man, he's out there. He's trying to thrash that wheat in a place where the wind's not. He can't get it out where the wind can blow. It's hard because he's afraid of the, he's afraid of the, the Midianites. So he has to get by a wine press where he doesn't have much wind. And he has to toss that up and toss that up. He has to work two or three times as hard just to get a little bit of grain. He's just working, he's working, he's working. And he just, he's looking at himself and thinking of his problems. And he's, he just said, the Lord hath forsaken us. Angel sitting over on the tree. I think angels watch us. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. And the angel came along and said, The Lord is with thee. You know, here was God's message to Gideon. Why do you think? Because you've had to fight some spiritual battles that the Lord has left you. Why do you think because things have not gone the way that you want them to go. You can see the sin in your nation. You know that God has to bring judgment on sin. Why, when you're going through these things, God has been with you, Gideon. Why do you think that he has left you? See, Gideon couldn't see the Lord was with him. Can you see that tonight? Can you go through hard times? Can you walk through the valleys? And still know that God is there. That you're just a soldier in God's army fighting the battle. You're out there. You're, you, you've been saved. You're on your way to heaven. The devil hates you, folks. The devil hates this church. And every Bible-believing church. Can you just see that, that because you're in the battle, you're a soldier, God called you to fight a spiritual battle. And why do we get so upset when we have to fight the spiritual battle? We forget that we're called to fight God's battles. God hasn't left us. Brother Lester Olaf. You know, he's been one of my heroes for many years. And of course, he's passed on, gone to be with the Lord. But I remember I got to hear him preach one time. And you know how you build people up in your mind. And I went to hear him preach, and he, he wasn't a, an overpowering preacher. At least the night I heard him, he wasn't an overpowering preacher. He just took his Bible. You know, he just took his good old King James Bible. He got up in the pulpit, and he read, and he preached a little while, and he'd read some more, and he'd, he'd read some more scripture, and he preached some more. And I, I thought, boy, that's not what I expected. I thought he'd just come in and just, just preach, 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 and just roll us over. But you know, 
And preachers make that mistake sometimes. Whether you can preach real good, or as people would call it, or whether you can't is not the point. The point is, is God with you? And the Holy Spirit was with Brother Roloff. When he got on preaching, people came down the aisle. People walked the aisle. People got saved. People got right with God. You see, Lester, Brother Low Roloff had learned the lesson. It was not him that won souls. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit that wins souls. This angel looked at Gideon. He said, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. You know, it wasn't that Gideon was such a great man. It was that God said he was a great man. If God says you're a great man, you're a great man. If God says you're a great woman, you're a great woman. And let me tell you something. If you're a Christian tonight and you're living as best you can for the Lord and you're doing the best you can for Jesus Christ and serving the Lord, you may not be, you may not be very well known. You may not be very well known in, in your, in your uh, community or your church. But let me tell you, if God says you're a great witness for him, you're a great witness for him. It wasn't what Gideon had. It wasn't his power. It wasn't his ability to fight. Gideon wasn't a soldier. He wasn't a warrior. God said, you let me take care of that. You're a great man. And because God said he was a great man, he was a great man. We just need to stand on God's word. Secondly, the Lord told Gideon to obey his command. Let me read verse 13 through 16 in chapter 6. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Gideon was just about defeated. You see what he was doing here? He was seeing as a natural man. He said, my family is, is one of the poorest people. He said, I, I'm a poor man. In other words, I don't have any money. And he said, I'm the least in my father's family. I, he said, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not anybody. I can't do what you're telling me. I'm supposed to go out and lead my country to victory. I'm nobody. I, I have no. He was looking as, as, a, as, a, as an ordinary man. Listen, we need to see as God's warriors, God's on our side. See, the Lord had said, you're a great man, Gideon. That's all, that's all that it took. We need to look at Jesus tonight. Can you do that? I believe God's looking for soldiers to follow him. God's looking for people who will follow Jesus, and, and not soldiers who will say, I can't do it. He's looking for people to say, it's God's will, we can do it. See, that's just exactly the way the devil wants us to think. If he can keep us down, if he can keep us discouraged, he can get us out of the battle. He can cause us not to fight the battle. It's one of the hardest things in the world to, come up, to overcome discouragement. I know. I get discouraged. I get discouraged in prayer sometimes. Man, you pray for somebody, and you pray for somebody, you pray for somebody. You want to see something happen. And the old devil comes along and says, see, your prayers are not doing any good. See there, you might as well quit praying. Your prayers are not doing any good. The devil is a liar. But it's hard, isn't it? 